Okay, welcome to the Guthrie Public Schools Board of Education meeting, uh, Monday, June 27, 2022. Roll call, please. Davis. Here. Smedley. Here. Gerard. Here. Schroeder. Here. Flagg. Here. Pearson. Celine. Here. Mr. President, we have a quorum. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> As we begin this meeting, let us pause for a moment of silence. Thank you. Okay, agenda item six, recommendation, consideration, and action upon renewal for OSIG, with OSIG for property, general, liability, fleet, vehicle, and errors and omissions coverage for 2022 to 2023. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we Obviously, this is a normally uh, an item that we handle at the regular board meeting in June, but because of the quote that we received, which was a 62% increase in premium, um, we wanted to take a step back, work with our local agent, and work with our staff to see what we could do to uh, possibly mitigate some of the costs of that uh, original quote which was a if I remember right I don't have it offhand I think it was a $238,000 increase in uh, premium and through all of this uh, Ms. Chapel and myself and at times Mr. Thompson have taken a deep dive into our insurance coverage and also what has been done in the past and what we have been uh, working on going forward that would be best for the district. Uh, the, uh, there, there are reasons for the increase, and I'll let uh, the gentleman from Martin Insurance speak to those in a moment, but uh, we have identified some potential savings so that the uh, um, increase is reduced somewhat <clears throat> it's not going to be what we paid last year and as you can see historically uh, with the graph that you have at your uh, table uh, this has been an ongoing uh, escalation that is prompted by multiple things uh, and as I've mentioned in committee meetings <clears throat> currently Oklahoma is not a place that insurance companies want to insure schools. And so the only available vendor for this is Oklahoma School Insurance Group, which is a pool in, of uh, over 500 school districts. Uh, and they are right now the only game in town. As we all know, uh, when you do not have competition it, it can be very challenging for uh, the way it looks and especially with the current situation with without a competitor uh, we are somewhat at their mercy but I I will say that uh, uh, Mike and Pat Chief that are here from Martin Insurance and a gentleman uh, from OSIG we all met this morning to to go over uh, the final discussion of this prior to making a recommendation to the board and we we do have a recommendation but before we get to that uh, I want to kind of let Mike and Pat talk a little bit about how we got here and uh, what we and then I will talk a little bit about some of the measures that we have taken to somewhat mitigate the cost that we're dealing with here. Obviously this was um, somewhat of a surprise and uh, uh, something that uh, gives us pause to say the least. So uh, Mike and Pat, if you guys want to uh, sure, talk a sure. little bit about uh, Thank you, Dr. this. Uh, I'm Pat Chief with Martin Insurance and this is Mike Chief. So to kind of bring us up speed, 
we go back about two years, uh, and this will kind of tie into why we have such a dramatic <coughs> price increase this year. So two years ago, the school's insurance was written on a blanket basis for the property. And like I said, the majority of all your increase is the property insurance. So two years ago, the school was written on a blanket basis. The insurance company wrote it. What that is, is all the values are basically put in, I guess for better terms, into one bucket. And as you have a loss, they dip in and pay the loss regardless of whatever the value you get the full replacement cost, okay? By pooling them under a blanket basis, the insurance company really did not enforce the cost of value uh, that we currently see now. We were able to, or the insurance company didn't enforce it, so the schools were able to insure the buildings for 70 or 80% of the actual value under a blanket policy. But you would still be entitled to full replacement cost being under a blanket basis. So if you had a building for 100,000 that it took replace, you only had really insure it for 70 or 80,000, you'd still get the full replacement cost. So the reinsurers who ride the property insurance then came back last year and said, look, we are doing away with the blanket basis anymore. Uh, they did not feel that they were getting the insurance premium due. So they changed it to, it's now it's based on each individual building to where you have a 125% margin clause. In other words, instead of having the blanket basis now, each building will have to stand on its own and they are wanting it insured up to the full replacement cost value. So before when you had the building that was insured for 70 or 80,000, now it has to be insured for the full 100,000. 100, um, so with that being said, OSIG came out and did appraisals on all the buildings. And what we've seen in the last two years since COVID hit is building costs have skyrocketed. They've gone up anywhere 70, 80% on some buildings. And so in order so that the school will not fall into uh, not a deficit, but have enough to replace the building. Okay, so you wouldn't have to have tax dollars to come back in and replace the building. They came in and said, look, we got to insure these up to the full replacement cost. And so the appraisal was done. We basically, the insurance company raised the building values approximately 47 million. Okay. And so that's the large impact on the property. And like I said, we have seen this not only in the school industry, city businesses, county businesses, uh, our churches that we insure, all of them are now having to insure, mainly because of the uh, increased costs and the building costs to replace the buildings. And so that's what we've done. Uh, so when they came out, they appraised all the buildings over 250,000. And so now uh, we met with Cody, all the buildings are insured to value up to the necessary cost. But like I said, you also have a 125% margin clause in there that if it exceeds what we feel like the replacement cost is, you have up to 25% <coughs> to do it. Whereas under the blanket, it was just in there. So those are the two main things that have impacted the property costs. Uh, I might also add, we did have one school, the Charter Oak School, we actually lowered the value. In our evaluations, we found that some of the costs that we had insured for also include architecture costs, the cost to lay the utilities, the cost for the dirt work. So we ended up actually lowering that value of that building there. So, but like I said, the overall increase we have seen in the state for the true property rates is 10%, but the increase is we raised the property values 47 million. So, so with, with that, what we did, we worked with, uh, with Mike and Pat to go through and look at some of our buildings that may be, because um, everything was at replacement cost. Um, so we identified some buildings that potentially were uh, not as valuable for the overall mission of the district. And we, as we evaluated those, 
we made the decision to get the quote that we have for the recommendation tonight for several of our facilities to be insured at actual cash value versus replacement cost. An example of that, uh, the at Cotterill, um, we we know that we're going to replace that building, and we have plans in the very near future to begin work on that. We feel like there is no need to to insure that building at replacement cost because we have the money in place so we would insure that building at actual cash value uh, because we're if if a tornado were to hit Cotterill today let's say we would we would be in the same boat we we would start construction but we would have to have portables brought in quickly anyway and we could do that with an actual cash value coverage um, we had several that we converted to debris removal only. Uh, for instance, the portable classrooms around Cotterill, if those were to be um, rendered obsolete due to an, a wind and hail event or something along those lines, we would not want to replace the actual portables because we plan to rebuild the building anyway uh, where it would encompass uh, taking away any need for those portable classrooms. Another area that we looked at uh, is the uh, is favor and we uh, made the decision to convert that to actual cash value as well because the use of favor could be it could be moved to somewhere else very easily with what we're doing there with our alternative school. Another item is our indoor baseball facility, which is the original Favors <coughs> PE building from the 20s, and to, re, uh, to ensure that at replacement cost seemed uh, excessive at, at best. Um, we really what we took is the ones that are that are portables that are at the end of their life, which we have multiple that are, and we, were, we decided to make those insured at de debris removal only. The portables that are still viable, we move those to actual cash value. And uh, then we adjusted our deductibles to a, and, and one of the things, I, I went back and had conversations with Dennis Schultz about how we got here as well. Uh, Remember that when we were in dire straits because we could not pass bond issues and the only way for us to survive with our facilities was through the building fund. Uh, it made our building fund very, very vulnerable if a catastrophic event happened and we had to cover a deductible that we were not prepared for. And the deductibles are by event. So if we had a tornado that took out two buildings um, that's an event, not by building. Uh, now, if we have a tornado and then a week later we have another tornado, those are two events. But uh, we had very low deductibles and, I'm, and that was in an effort to protect where the district was at the time with the, uh, the building fund because it was very vulnerable <coughs> with uh, a potential issue. And so as we went through this also, we, we noticed that, um, and, and this did not make a huge difference, but we also noticed that our autos had not been depreciated. And so we have things in place now to properly depreciate the value of our autos on our policy. Uh, that did not, I think that made about a $3,000 uh, lowering of, of cost there. Uh, so we've, we have put things in place there as well. Um, and really what this amounts to is uh, this is 82400 less than what our original quote was for, but it's still $155,000 in 
and change more than what we paid last year. Uh, so the 62% increase was reduced to 40.5. Uh, I, if we had other options, uh, I think we would, we would definitely explore those, but there's no guarantee even if a company was willing to write a policy given the loss uh, that schools have experienced in our state with the weather, uh, that it would be less than what we're getting from OSU. So uh, I guess with all of that, I would uh, see if the board members have any questions of myself or Michelle or Mike and Pat. So what about the, uh, the appraisal process? I mean, is that, is that an appraisal that OSIG does or that your agency provides? OSIG came out and appraised. He went out to every building and appraised it. So are they, uh, are they licensed appraisers, you know, qualified to appraise? I don't know if he is truly licensed, but he's been in the insurance business for 30 some years and he's he has actually appraised Guthrie three other times during that time. He is the one in charge of appraising every school in the state. It's for OC, yeah. and they use Marshall Swift as their guideline for their valuations. Yeah. So if we have disagreements with their appraisals, do we have a right of appeal with it, or is, is his work fine? I mean, okay. no. I mean, you're you're more than welcome to appeal it, uh, but it is based on actual buildings that were completed. I mean, everything is very much pretty much in line with the true building cost. For example, Kingfisher just finished their junior high and it was $245 a foot. Most of the buildings that we changed are running right now about $220 to $219 a foot. So it wasn't overly insuring the buildings by no means, but We're yet- We're kind of in the zone for that value to replace everything in today's market. Is it, is it fair to assume that we're in a, obviously in a, in a market that's just ridiculous right now. In, in a couple of years, as we start to see things come back down, we would get a revaluation. Then, then you should. Then we need to reevaluate the buildings lower Absolutely. because then you're over insuring them, and you're paying for more insurance than you need. It's just right now with this climate, uh, you know, from the time he did the appraisals in October to now, we've even seen a 10 or 15 percent increase in costs. And that's not to say in January we may have to reevaluate the value. It, it could go up more, but right now we're, he was trying to get it in a comfortable area that the 125 percent would still, in case it went up in the next couple of months, you'd still be well within that. Um, so on the county side, I'm familiar with that. Um, we're, we currently have a firm doing the same thing, appraisal statewide mm -hmm. this year, um, an out-of-state firm doing that. But um, from your perspective, is the increase more the value of the property or is it the rates nationally as well? The value of the property. The actual true rate increase is 10%. So 10% of the 40 is a true rate increase. The rest of it is pure property values going up. The cost of construction. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is just not only to Guthrie. The majority of all of the schools in the state of Oklahoma have the exact same property rate increases. Last year <clears throat> was a revaluation for Edmond, and their property value or their their premium went up 59 percent, and then it went up another 16 percent this this year. You call it the same way. Mustang had. Property values went up a hundred million. I mean, it's it's, just a, it's like I said, those two factors I talked about going from a blanket to each building standing on its own, and then the true building costs have just skyrocketed. I mean, I understand all that, but I guess kind of what bug, kind of bothers me a little bit. I mean, so Charter Oak went down, and and it's at two hundred and fifty four dollars a square so foot. So you explain the re the rationale behind that. So it makes me question: Will we? with OSIG ever properly evaluating any property when they can come out to Charter Oak and recognize, oh, we've been over-insuring on this building because we haven't correctly been looking at replacement costs. It really kind of questions in my mind the, the, uh, the you know, the professional or the, you know, professional competency around evaluating properties. 
you know, so. <clears throat> well, this was the first year in the last couple of years that OSIG has came out and did the full appraisal. So how did they appraise it the first time they insured that building? They just, uh, did they just look all the paid for it? They didn't appraise it when, when Charter Oak was built. So how did they, so we requested a dollar amount? Yes, and that's what we insured it for. Yeah. Yeah. So you say that uh, like two years ago is when they switched from the blanket type coverage to the actual, in, you know, individual yes. coverage. Was there, I mean, obviously you guys were, you, you were notified of this change. Mm -hmm. Did you push those notifications out to the districts that there was some change coming in the way that policies were going to be? Well, yes. Because obviously, I mean, that we knew then that we, we would have known at that point right. that there was going to be some change. schools are they going to be reevaluated? Yeah. Right, yeah. that we were going to have to be reevaluated. Yes. So two years ago, you, you Two years ago, that's out. when they first started doing it. And then that's when OSEC came out and said, we need to start appraising right. because all so the costs. So that's when you guys were made aware of the change. So did, did you reach out to Dr. Simpson or somebody at our district and say, hey, we want you guys to be aware that these changes could be coming or are going to be coming? Yes. Because I, I don't know that I've ever heard that discussion. I mean, I don't remember. So was the, communi that was the communication that rates are going up or that OSIG is reevaluating properties? Reevaluating the properties to get them insured to value. So I guess, uh, so, okay. So what kind of collaboration occurred with the district and the facilities director or what have you? I mean, was there any kind of partnership in, in the evaluation of the properties, the appraisals, or was it just a drive-by? No, he yeah. came out and visited every school. Was he this came out. after the rate increase was proposed or prior to that? Well, this was prior. I mean, they came out last October. And did a drive-by? No, they, came, they went to every building. He went to every building. I feel like I'm missing something here. Well, as I was gonna say, and I, so I guess and I wanna go back to that when you guys communicated that the, the coverage type was changing, was it communicated through an email? Was it communicated through a letter? I mean, how was that communicated to the district? Two years ago? Yeah. When we present the proposal, it has outline of different changes in the coverages. <clears throat> so the proposal showed it was going from a marginal from blanket to margin costs. Okay, so it just. It was in the proposal. It was in the proposal, but it was never, was it ever actually discussed with anybody that it had changed? I can't recall if we did or not. I okay. assume we did, but okay. I can't recall. Okay. That's all I've got. Okay. Anything else? Right. Well, um, I would, we've we placed in front of you, or on the, at least on the, um, in the packet, a recommendation, and we don't make this lightly. Uh, trust me, this has uh, received a, a large amount of due diligence and, and, in fact, a second visit from the appraiser that led us to uh, reducing some of the original appraisals to get to where we felt like was the best option available. Um, it's not, you know, again, it's, I'm not going to sugarcoat this, it's $155,000 more than we paid last year. Uh, but it's $82,000 less than what we were quoted originally. And if we had uh, another carrier that we could explore, we would have done that. Uh, but, uh, and this is, the, the time sensitivity of this is this board needs to take action on this in order to uh, maintain insurance uh, before July 1st, so by June 30th. So I would recommend that the board uh, approve the uh, the suggested renewal 
it's revision number four in your chart, but it's uh, for five hundred thirty-nine thousand nine hundred thirteen dollars. Okay. Do we have a motion, Mr. President? I move that we accept revision number four, premium of five hundred thirty-nine thousand nine hundred thirteen dollars, with OSIG for interest. Second. Well, let Second. me let me interject there uh, <clears throat> just to make sure that everyone is clear. The revision uh, from uh, that takes our twenty five hundred dollar property deductible to twenty five thousand, and that takes our wind, storm, and hail deductible from ten thousand to twenty five thousand as well. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Uh, I just want to say that I want to thank Dr. Simpson and Michelle and Cody for your just due diligence that you've done with this process because, I mean, as a board member, a $155,000 increase is very difficult to swallow um, for the district because that's a lot of money. Um, that's, that's, you know, several teachers that we could have hired just to put it lightly. So I just want to thank you guys for doing your due diligence to do the best that we can to make this situation as best as the best as possible. So thank you. Okay. Roll call please. Davis? Yes. Smedley? Yes. Gerard? Yes. Schroeder? Yes. Flag? Yes. Salim? Yes. Six I zero nay. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks guys. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. Celine? Yes. Six eyes, zero names. Well, there's still here people here to <laughs>